Greetings everyone, my name is Flare Blitz and welcome to Aquadine, a kinetic visual novel that combines fantasy and romance while unraveling the mysteries of an ancient civilization. Learn about the people who inhabit this town as they grow to overcome emotional struggles in their respective roots. The story is about a gondola boy who gives part time tours to pay for his mother's hospital bills. We've already got ourselves a tragic story that's treading on water here, but. I like story with tragedy in it because we can feel wholehearted about these characters. So for looks of it we've got four different possible routes. Let's see what's going on here. Ah, from long times ago. Long ago a devastating drought ravaged the land. Their soil was too parched to grow crops and their livestock dwindled in number. Heat strokes, hunger, and dehydration took the lives of countless villagers. And apologies if you hear a fan going on in the background, it is literally really hot in my room right now, and I need something to keep me cool. Without the necessary resources for survival, the villagers turned to Lavios, the sea deity, and prayed for food and clean water. Lavios granted them their wish, but only under one condition that the merfolk would be allowed to live peacefully among them, and for many decades they did. Over time, however, the merfolk were gradually discriminated among the against because they were considered abnormal half-humans, inferior beings. Lavios became enraged and created an underwater kingdom, now known as Ancient Aquadine, to personally lead and protect the merfolk himself. Until one day, the ancient civilization ceased to exist. Over here. Ah, some voice acting as well. And so, I want a river tour guide. And so, the people of a land named this town Aquadine as a tribute to the sea deity. This is also one of the many statues sculptured by believers of the merfolk lore. Really? Violetta. Are we seriously supposed to believe that mermaids exist? They're not called mermaids. It's perfectly understandable that most people share the same skepticism, especially those who aren't from here. Even, though to, well, even today, people continue to debut over the validity of the law. Despite the lack of reliable evidence, however, it's impossible to ignore that the beliefs of our ancestors shaped much of our culture. As a result, the desire to please Lavios drove the town to become one of the best in the world at controlling water pollution. Aquadine even prides itself as a top exporter in both seafood and bottled fresh water. Part of the interruption, but I was wondering if he had any suggestions for a nice cup of coffee. Hmm. Actually, we're near one right now. Next to the statue, you'll find the Frenza Cafe, a family-owned business that has been around for over 50 years. They serve some of the best coffee and sweets in town, so I highly recommend you pay a visit. If you like, I could book a reservation for you too. Thank you. That would be great. Thank you. My pleasure. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Hey. Is there a marble statue? marble st store around here. Oh. <laughs> we talk about statues when I get for another word that looks like it. I was sort of a default word. Marbles? My daughter has been collecting marbles since she was a kid. I could never understand why, but she absolutely loves them. We all have our own different loves. Daddy! There's no need to be ashamed about what you like, though it is the first time anyone's asked me about marbles. Do you have any marbles? I'm joking, of course. <laughs> you might have some luck checking the souvenir shops in the mall. I can write you a list when we get back. Isn't that great? Let's go there together after the tour. Alright, thanks, Dad. It must be nice for a family to spend time like this. I wish I could do that more often. Is that us singing? <laughs> 
As Magondola continues to tour the family, his smile gradually fades away. Instead, his voice takes its place, a voice that soon breaks into about whatever that is. Gentle words rhythmically push through the water as calmly as the soothing breeze. The white gondola rides casually over the clear waves and glides through a narrow passage. People enchanted by the song open the windows and stop to listen as the sound of his voice travels across the canal. It's Sel's voice, isn't it? Sel is singing today. Good for, good for you, Diane. Okay, that's ended. I didn't know how long that was going to... Oh, great. Um, hold on. I have nothing against the developers or the voice actors, but... Wait. Wait, it's under music voice, not under vo volume voice? Okay, that's a little bit of a bug, because that should be under voice volume. I'm going to have to turn that off for a moment. I'm, just, I'm really sorry, folks, but I feel like all the voices are under one. Good for you, Diana. Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Anya continues drawing the canal while trying to ignore Diana, who is scrambling frant frantically for her phone. Later. Catch you later. Without wasting another second, Diana hurries along before she misses her chance. Goodbye. Bye. Dying inches away. Okay, is it is it over? <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes! It doesn't need to be on a repeat. <laughs> Dying inches away for a crowd of people who are also trying. Okay, so so it doesn't need to be on repeat. To the sound of Sel's voice, Celia's voice. She is absolutely determined to get a picture with him. <laughs> I gotta hurry before I miss him. Ah, as Diana chases after his voice, she bumps into someone, and all their belongings fell with them. Look where you're going. <gasps> My bad. You okay? I am fine. Are you injured? Sorry about that. Nah, I'm good. Sorry about that. Diane stares out to the other girl for a moment, as if she recognised her from somewhere. Somewhere far, far away. From an ancient kingdom. An ancient civilization somewhere. But we're not that old, are we? Oh. Wait, I know you. You're... Farewell. An enigma, it would seem. Still stunned, Diana speeches as she gets a better look at the blonde. <laughs> it doesn't take long before she cracks a smile. She's Elizabeth, if I recall. <laughs> I can't believe she's here in Aquadine. Gotta get a picture of her. <gasps> oh no, my phone. I just got this darn thing. As Diana picks up her cracked smartphone from the ground, the other girl disappears into the crowd. Man, where'd she go? I just saw her. Well, at least I can still snap a picture of Sally. Click. Wow. Done yet? Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that. You're heading home? Maybe. Maybe we're heading home. Maybe we're not heading home. Well. I am, but my mom's gonna have me help around the cafe again. She's a real slave driver, you know. Oh, for goodness sakes. Uh, it's not like there's another visual novel recently that has mentioned that those two words, slave driver. <laughs> And working around a similar sort of environment as well. Not a cafe, but a very similar one that offers out food and stuff. Sounds troublesome. I know, right? Oh yeah, guess what? Mm -hmm. What? I saw Elizabeth Rhodes today. I had no idea she'd be here. Can't believe I didn't know about it. Meh, just another human. <gasps> She's a celebrity. What else could you ask for? Actually... An alien. I think they'll be more interesting than something. Uh. So are you one of those people that believes in UFOs? That believes in the Martians and stuff like that? Okay, let me just see. Okay, cool. I'm fine with music, but not when it's continuous singing. It's just a personal pet peeve when trying to talk, that's all. Nothing against the voice actors or actresses. By no means stretch of the imagination. <laughs> You're so weird. Anyway, Elizabeth is pretty easygoing, unlike somebody I know. Are you saying that Anya is not easygoing? I'm fine. Mock me all you like, but aliens are adorable. You are Anya, we like you already. Because I think aliens are adorable too. D you don't just judge something from the outside. By the way, want to stop by the cafe today? My mum hasn't seen you in... Forever since yesterday evening. No thanks. 
Just hang out with me for a bit longer, pretty please. Whatever. <sighs> Alright, it's not like I've got anything better to do anyway. You sound like that's like the better of the two evils. So who are we actually playing as? Aquadine's famous cafe has a classic charm, as it is decorated with an array of fresh vines and traditional paintings. Old wine bottles and flower vases occupy the shelves, among other antiques. Anya and Diane wait near a well-kept jukebox, while a lady in her forties is serving a customer. I imagine that's her mother. What's up? Mom, I'm home. Get moving. Diana, hurry up and get that table's order. See what I mean? Hey there. Anya, it's been a while. Well. I guess it has been. Well, are you saying that Susan's older then? <laughs> you're busy. You're buying something, right? Maybe. I was going to say you're busy, but this is buying. My bad, folks. Probably. Enjoy. Great. Have a seat. Let Diana know if you need anything, okay? After responding with a mere nod, Anya finds an empty table and quickly makes herself a home, reflecting how well she's known them. Of course, it would be impolite if you didn't. Anyways, save common route. Oh, it even has, like, the route that you're on in the game. That's pretty neat. Pretty neat indeed. Settings. No, we won't be going full screen. Mux up my recording settings as well. And we've only got a cyclopedia. I just noticed that. Uh, settings, encyclopedia. Um, this game is absolutely for free, folks. So if you want to know what all of these do, then I recommend downloading the games for yourself. There'll be a link in the description below, where it just says game, and then the link to the, um, the game itself. It's Etio page. Uh, after responding with me and Nod, Anya finds an empty table and quickly makes herself a home, reflecting how well she's known them. I think I've already said that part before. Dressed in her maid uniform, Diana returns with two cups of coffee and notices Anya occupied with her sketchbook. Oh, oh that's the one you drew today, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. I feel like this visual novel is going between different characters. So I think we are on the perspective of Diana because she, we keep following around Diana. But at the same time, the tour guide earlier was not that. So it could be shifting between different characters or we just have not spoken yet today. That reminds me, I have a teeny tiny favour to ask of you. How teeny tiny? Diane proudly whips out her phone and shows off her picture of Sally. She's like a kid who just pulled the best toy out of a cereal box. What do you think? Could you draw Sally for me? I really want to hang another picture of him in my room. Wow. You already cracked your phone? Uh... Yeah, it happened during the whole bumping into Elizabeth fiasco. What's in it for me? Mm -hmm. Your drink is on the house. <laughs> Don't we do that with friends anyways? Nah. Anya's eyes roll down at a cup of coffee she just sipped. She then looks back at Diana who has the brightest smile on her face. That explains why she suddenly wants to treat me to some coffee. How prudent. Actually. I'll just pay for it. It's only like 300 altos anyway. Please, Anya, draw a Sally for me. I'm fine. Not worth my time. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're harsh. My act of kindness isn't worth a gift from a friend. Is that clear? It's not an act, act of kindness if you expect something to return. Hmm, that can go both ways. I, I thought we were friends. Okay. Whatever. Fine. Thanks. Thanks a bunch. Well. I know Sally is pretty popular, but why do you like him? Isn't he just another gondola? <laughs> gondolier? Everyone knows that he's the youngest gondolier in town, but he's also really kind and talented. Even a lot of the local girls ride with him. Um, whichever way you spam that, folks, that is entirely up to you. But don't seem very smart. That's just how the fandom goes. I hear his granddaddy can be strict though, but he doesn't let that bother him when he's with customers. Anya drinks her coffee as she pretends to listen to Diana's constant rambling. 
Ah, oh, dearie me. The following morning begins with a little more noise than usual as a bit of interesting news made its way around the school. Classes haven't started yet, so students are speculating as much as they please. Hey, did you hear that we're going to get a transfer student? Really? Oh, Cameron. Oh, are we are? I didn't hear anything about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of excited. They're saying it's someone outside of Aquadine. Okay, so that must be our protagonist then. Who did you hear it from? The teachers. I was passing by the fossil tea room and they sounded kind of excited for some reason. Hmm. I wonder why. Don't know. Don't know. Maybe she's really smart or something. Or it could even be a he, I don't know. The morning bell sounds, marking the beginning of the first class. Everyone takes their seats as the teacher steps inside. Hey, folks. Morning class, we've got a transfer student from Sephria who will be joining us today. Now the rumors are confirmed, people will seem surprised that the transfer would be coming to this class. Nearly everyone's attention is directed at the door, curious to meet the new face. Let me say something. Go on and introduce yourself. Ah, wait, isn't that... Isn't that Elizabeth from earlier? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. A girl with blonde hair stands in front of a class. I need to find the stunned reactions of their faces. Greetings. Greetings, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Rhodes, and it is certainly a pleasure to meet you all. The class cheers with excitement as they couldn't believe that Elizabeth Rhodes, the famous city of Cephalia, is joining them as a fellow classmate. Despite Elizabeth already introducing herself, Diana still gazes on with disbelief, like she could be mixing her up with someone else. It's just too good to be true. Is this... a dream? Taken back by the coincidence, Elizabeth recognizes Diana and seems equally surprised. The chance of meeting each other again was so slim. That's how fate is, ladies and gentlemen. It's always going to be something along those lines. She waves back to Diane in a way that is perfectly identical to how she bids her fans farewell after a concert. But I doubt it, sir. <laughs> She's the real deal. Oh my goodness, this is the best day of my life. Incredible. So that's why the teachers were so excited. <laughs> I know, I know, Elizabeth is famous and all, but she stood a classmate. Sable, fanboy, fangirl, fan, whatever business for later. I like that, Mr. Norton. My, my. It appears an introduction is unnecessary. Oh, yeah. In that case, I'll just talk about myself. Hey. Boo! Hey, Diane. That's not nice. Diana, get back to your seat. Boo! Nobody wants to know about you, Mr. Norton. We all want to know about the new transfer student that's a Cena. You see, I wasn't exactly from around here either. So many years sailing the seas and carrying out missions on the good old SS Newport. How wonderful! You are a sailor? That's fascinating. And there goes the spotlight. Hey! Sailors can teach you some really interesting and valuable experiences, okay? I'm not speaking from experiences, but I imagine through all of their adventures throughout their lives, they can give you some really interesting insights. Heh, <laughs> I've been to all sorts of places, but if there's something special about this town, I'll tell you that. Have you ever been to Cephalia? You bet. You bet. I've been everywhere, Goldie. Pardon? Goldie? Yeah, that's your very own nickname. I like you like. Uh, Not really. Well, <laughs> but man, with all of us shipmates bunched up together, it can get freaking hot in there. Would have traded anything for some fresh air. Now that you've mentioned it, is that why you never wear a suit like the other teachers? Because he can get hot very easily. Haha, <laughs> right on the money, Karate Kid. You sure you, don't, you, you, sure you don't want to see me sweat? <laughs> That's not a question that you ask your students, I'm not gonna lie. Maybe if he keeps us up, we'll start, we'll start stall out for clock. Almost forgot. Oh, almost forgot, but I got a class to teach. Never mind. <laughs> There's a seat over there. Why can't you just call her Elizabeth? Or Lizzie, or... With all eyes still on Elizabeth, strolls down a few rows towards the empty seat by the corner. Open up your history, folk. Bo history, history books, folks. It's time to go back in time. <laughs> wow, that was kind of lame, Mr. Norton. <laughs> Thanks for volunteering, Chatterbox. 
go ahead and start us off on page 64. <laughs> ah, lovely. That used to happen in school as well when that one kid who doesn't shut up then gets to be volunteered to read out what's within the book. Like, that's the kind of karma that we still need. Who do you think I am? Page 64. Wish I could go back in time. After a more tense lesson than normal, class finally concludes for the day. However, no one is rushing out of the doors like they usually do, which is a rare sight. I wonder why. Is it something to do with a new transfer student? I couldn't imagine that being such a coincidence, a coincidental thing, huh? Hey, folks. That's it for today, folks. Also, could someone show Elizabeth around before the next class? No. I'll do it, Mr. Norton. Several other students desperately volunteer as well, but Mr. Norton is looking elsewhere. After scanning the library room, he spots a bookworm reading alone at his desk. Someone who couldn't care less about helping some new student. He's a perfect target. Romeo, I've got a mission for you. Robin? What's going on? Earth to Romeo! No. Could you stop calling me that? My name isn't Romeo. It's Robin. Is this our protagonist? I'm getting confused as to who's the protagonist in this game. Like, there are certain games where the protagonist kind of differs between certain characters. But there's gotta be a protagonist. I mean, even the synopsis says about a story who gives part-time tours to pay for his mother's... Yeah, but literally the synopsis has a protagonist entailed in there, but we have not yet met him, so this could be it, Robin? You bet. Sure it is. Anyway, show the new girl around, would you? <gasps> what? Why four eyes of all people? He barely talks to... Hey, Diana. I have glasses as well, okay? I take heavy offense to that. <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. With Mr. Norton's overwhelming presence before him, Robin twitches. He knows all too well there's no escape once his teacher's mind is made up. Fine. See you around. Atta boy. I'll leave her to you. If it is too much of a hassle, I will not require any assistance. Don't worry about that. Ah, oh, no need to be shy. You two will get along just fine. As Robin reluctantly closes the book, Elizabeth greets him with a smile. That sight alone is enough to make any boy fall head over her heels. Uh, but he doesn't weave her. If you don't mind. It appears I have an appointment with you. Whatever. Sounds like it. The two of them begin their school tour. Leave the rest of the class frustrated and disappointed, including Diana. Hey. What are you trying to pull, Mr. Norton? Now, kids. Romeo hardly talks to anyone and the girl is new here, so I just want to make sure we all get along. Really? Really? That looks more like a setup. <laughs> I've got no idea what you're talking about. I don't believe it. But I wanted to interview her and stuff. <laughs> Come on, Diana. We all know you just want to stall through the next class. Well. I've got no idea what you I have no idea what you're talking about. Great, of course you don't. Of course you do Hey, H works. That's lovely. With several students watching from the windows, Robin seems more anxious than ever to finish the tour. He's clearly not comfortable with this much attention. Let's just get this over with. Forgive me. Allow me to apologize for interrupting your reading. You appear to be enjoying that book. Whatever. It's fine. Mrs. Norton is just doing whatever he wants. Can't do much about it. My, my. He certainly is an amusing teacher. I have yet to meet one as charismatic as him. I guess. Well, you made a pretty big commotion today. Well... It appears so. I was rather surprised to learn that I am also well known in Aquadine. Hmm. What do you do? Pardon? You really do not know who I am? No. No, just some blonde girl who transferred in this morning. Okay, so as much of a bookworm as you are, you don't read into Cena's. But there you go, that is a very specific area, don't you think? Or for general knowledge peeps, that could be something that is quite generalistic. A blunt choice of words, but as you know now, I am Elizabeth Rhodes, a famous concert singer from Cephalia. A Cena, huh? You plan on performing here too? You see. I originally moved to Aquadine due to my father's business, so I'm uncertain at the moment. Even if that's the reason why you moved, you could still perform here if you wanted. There are several opera houses here. I feel like Robin and Elizabeth are kind of like... Um, good for each other. In a way of just mutual friends. Only because, well... 
Robin isn't going to slumber over Elizabeth because of her social status. If you don't mind. I have actually taken a break from my career. Let's move on, shall we? Elizabeth walks on ahead, leaving Robin a bit surprised by her reaction. However, his dominion reverts the moment she makes a wrong turn. Do you even know where you're going? How embarrassing. Pardon, but would you be so kind to guide me? That's why I'm here. That's why I've been appointed, not by choice. After a brief tour around the school, Robin and Elizabeth enter the cafeteria. Other than the lunch ladies getting things ready, it's pretty much empty. And finally, here's the cafeteria. My, my. Oh, I am anxious to try out your menu. Do you enjoy showing me, me yours here with your friends? I have no friends. Later. Uh, sure, anyway, I guess that's that. Without much further ado, Robin starts walking. It's painfully clear he doesn't want to waste another minute of his time. One moment. Huh? What does she want now? I wish to thank you for showing me around. To be honest, I was nervous after learning that I would be transferring schools. Really? Nervous? Aren't you an idol or something? You are correct. It does seem ironic for me to say something strange like that. You're weird. Forgive me. You may be right. Forgive me. Do you miss your hometown? Well, I lived my whole life in Cephalia. Perhaps I'll require some time to grow accustomed to these changes. You are too kind. Thank you again for your time. I should take my leave now. As a matter of fact. Actually, there's one more place I haven't shown you. Oh? And where would that be? Just follow me. A few footsteps echo through the barren stairway before they reach the top floor. With Elizabeth following behind him, Robin reaches for the door and opens it. After shielding their eyes from the overwhelming sunlight, they can nearly see the entire ocean from the rooftop. How wonderful! Beautiful! You can see so much from the town from up here. Yeah, the sound of seagulls chirping over the soothing waves, the smell of the ocean as the cool breeze passes against our faces, and a bird's eye view of the town. This is my favorite place. Ah, isn't that so precious? Ready now? I thought you would have said the library. <laughs> hey, way to judge someone by his looks, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> oh dear, this whole town is my favorite place. That's why I can understand how much you miss your hometown. For a while, neither of them say a word as they continue to savor the scenery in silence. So, we're on the perspective of a non-humanoid theme. Hmm. Since you're already here, you may as well learn what the outside world is like. You can even tell your friends about your experiences in Aquadine whenever you visit them. You never know what the future will hold. After getting lost ex blank, exam examining the wondrous town from a distance, she looks at Robin, who is smiling for the first time this tour. Forgive me. What was your name again? Robin. Robin L Leon? No! You're doing what the teacher did just now and gave everyone nicknames! Like, is he rubbing off on you, Elizabeth, or something? <laughs> no, just call him Robin. May I call you Mr. Bookworm instead? I believe that nickname suits you quite well. No. Robin will do. You see. You remind me of someone. Someone I met a long time ago. Thank you again for guiding me and for sharing this view. I will never forget it. Aww. Is your badge just too precious for one's own soul to... to absorb? After another long tour, Sally skills towards the dock and reaches for his rope. He extends his hand to help his passengers off the gondola. Thank you. Thank you for choosing the Cloud Company. Have a good evening. Once to go the separate ways, Sally stretches before grabbing the doorknob, but just as he nearly opens it, he hears a familiar song from a, from a mermaid, probably. This song. It's my favorite song. It's faint, but she has a nice voice. <laughs> Silly, did your voice change? You sound like a little girl. No, Grandfather. Someone else is singing my song, and I kind of want to follow it. His response is met with a brief moment of silence, but soon enough, Sally could hear someone rushing out of the door. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? 
Do you not know about the sirens? Why, yes. Yes, I... Grandpa will speak. It's okay. Grandpa will tell you. Long ago. They are beautiful, yet dangerous creatures who lure sailors towards rocks with their song. Then crash. They will drown. Isn't that just a myth? This whole town was built on mythology. You of all people should know that. Never said I believed in it. But you are just a boy. You are too young to die. Aren't all of us just too young to die? None of us want that, really. I'll be back in a bit. Fine. Fine, but if you're still alive, go buy some groceries. Salmon is 30% off today. Hey, that's a good sign, is it not now? That's a beautiful view, by the way. Like, something about the sea is just so satisfying. Then there's also the blue moon in the background, too. And the clear sky. And the jellyfish as well. The sound of her voice leads Celia's gondola through a shore he hardly visits. A few ghosts like jellyfish appear around him, but he doesn't seem surprised. Well, I survived the rock so much with the sirens. Grandpa can be really... No, you can't be like that, of course. How dare you say that about him? And these jellyfish? I remember seeing them when I was younger. I tried telling people about them, but no one ever believed me. I used to think they were part of my imagination or something. But mother could see them, too. Always wondered why. How are you? It's been a while since I've seen you guys. How are you? The jellyfish don't respond. As jellyfishes do. Of course they can't talk. However, something did change. The girl's scene stopped. Scene stopped. Sally turns towards her direction as his eyes widen. He couldn't believe his eyes. Could hey! It be? A siren! What is going on here in these parts? Wait, what am I saying? That's a mermaid. A mermaid? Frightened, the mermaid quickly dives underwater and swims away as fast as she could, leaving Sally speechless. I don't believe it. Did I really see a mermaid? Despite his astonishment, Sally quickly wanders around the shore to search for clues. He spends about half an hour looking, but comes up short. Hmm. Nothing. The jellyfish linger by, as if they're watching over him. He stares back and cracks a smile. Heh. I suppose you guys wouldn't have anything to say, would you? Not at all, they're jellyfish. Sally's gondola makes its way back to the canal. A view that looks even more stunning now than during the day. I know I saw a girl who looks like a mermaid, but was she real? It was dark, so maybe I was seeing things. Hey. hey, Sel. How have you been doing? Hello. I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. What are you doing out here so late? I thought your company closed a while ago. It is. But I'm just out on a late school. What about you? Just taking up the trash. Taking up the trash. We're about to close up for the night. Cameron works for his family's restaurant whenever they need extra hands. But since they're usually busy, he's almost always helping them out. Young Pizzeria is a highly recommended restaurant for tourists and locals alike. So their success is actually comparable to the Friends, uh, sorry, the Fred's uh, Cafe. By the way, did you hear someone sing earlier? What? It's kind of noisy in the restaurant, so probably not. Was it you? No. No, but it was my song though. <laughs> you mean Tori's song? Right, Tori's song. I was wondering. How is she doing, by the way? Do you know? From what I've heard, she seems better these days, and she's even reading more often. That's good. I heard that she had trouble seeing and walking, so I was worried. Yeah, it's an extremely rare disease that doctors never witnessed before. But not exactly sure what caused it or how to cure it. Hmm. Robin doesn't like talking about it, and I heard that guests other than family weren't allowed. I'm sorry. Sorry, but I hope you understand. It'd be overwhelming for her to see so many unexpected visitors. Yeah, before we came along, she was the most requested gondolier in town. I'm sure there are countless people who are eager to see her. In any case, I'll talk to Robin. You've known him for a while, so I'm sure we can let you visit. Really? really? I mean, I hope it's not too much trouble. You're fine. You my thanks. thanks. 
I have to get back now. So I'll see you later. Cameron returns to the restaurant to finish clean up for the night. Cameron is such a worry what, but he's a cool guy. Anyways, I better get back before grandfather starts complaining again. Again. It's a very blue sorry, it's a very blue hue to this game. I really like it. Very calming. Robin goes to the hospital to pay for his mother. Robin goes to the hospital to pay his mother a visit. With the intention of spending the night, he brought a change of clothes and a toothbrush. Mother, you're still up. It's late. Robin. I had a feeling you'd be stopping by, so I'd stayed up a little longer. Don't worry. You need to get some rest. Don't worry about me. Tori resets the books to the side and gives Robin her undivided attention. How are you? How was your day? Mostly the same. We had a transfer student though, so Mr. Norton made me show her around. Oh. Her? What's her name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth Rhodes. Do you know her? The scene from Cephlia? That's exciting. Maybe you could be friends. With someone like me, she'll find out what everyone thinks of me sooner or later. But you two have something in common after all. I heard that you've been seen lately. Serial? The room turns quiet enough that one could faintly hear crickets chirping outside. But after a brief moment, Robin fixes his glasses. Really? How many times did I tell you, Mother? Just call me Robin. <laughs> right. No, no. I'm sorry. The nurses just can't stop talking about you. I hope you don't tell them about me. Don't worry. Don't worry, I didn't say a word. Anyway, how are you feeling? Did Dr. Wadman say anything? Well... My condition worsened a little, but I'm still doing okay. I see. Hopefully everything works out. So, Robin is living a double life, per se. At school, he's Robin. But on the tour guys, he is Celia. When I get better, we can go schooling together. I'm excited to see how much you've improved. Yes, it's been so long since I've seen you with the oar. Brings back to memories. Do you remember those fresh pretzels we used to eat by the dock? We used to get go there almost every weekend. Interesting. Those were so good, especially when you dip them in warm cheese. And the smell of a butter would just lure people in. Kind of like mermaids would with the sea. There's a family that sells her near the floating market. I'll bring some when I come back. It's okay, you don't have to. What? How come? I thought you liked them too. I love you. We'll go together next time. Okay? Okay. Hopefully there will be a next time. And of course, of course there'll be a next time. It's past midnight and Robin spends the night in his mother's hospital room, resting over the couch. I don't know how much longer it'll take before I can pay off all of those bills, but I'll keep working for her sake. I met Mermaid. That was a mermaid, right? Robin tilts his head and gazes over the moon by the window. His eyes can't stay open for much longer and soon he falls asleep. A slip. And now within a underwater city, one that's told within the legends. As Sally slowly opens his eyes, he finds himself immersed in the deep blue ocean. His fingers reach out towards radiant sunlight that glimmers over the surface. Where am I? It definitely doesn't look like a ro looks like Robin. Wait, am I breathing underwater? Schools of fish wander past him directing his gaze towards a massive chunk of stone. What is this? Trying to get a better look, Seni swims closer and places his hand over part of the ruins. It is covered with strange inscriptions, possibly an ancient language. Could it be? Could this be? You see? Yes, you stand before Aquadine, the true city of Aquadine. Sally frantically looks around to see which direction the voice is coming from, but no one was there. Hmm. You are not to tell anyone but what you witnessed this evening. What are you talking about? Fool. The young mermaid. Wait, do I really see a mermaid? And how does he know I saw her? Hmm. Who are you? Oh, suddenly the ruins begin to shake and collapse, as if an earthquake is occurring underwater. Also called a tsunami later on. 
A large building breaks apart and trim tumbles towards him, sorry. Sally desperately tries to swim away, but he can't escape. His cries are muted by the crushing stone impacts. And he wakes up. Robin wakes up in the middle of the night, panting heavily. He notices his mother is still sound asleep before breathing a sigh of relief. It was just a dream. It's another early morning for Robin, as he is the first to arrive in the vacant classroom, which means the perfect time for a nap. Living two lives, yep. Okay, it's, it's confirmed now that Robin is living a double life. Living two lives sure takes a toll. Sometimes I wish I could just sleep all day. What's up? Hey, Four Eyes, what's up? So much more nap. Maybe if I pretend I'm asleep, she'll stop bothering me. Tell me how it went. Why is she was so persistent? Just leave me alone already. Hey! Come on, get up. I know you're awake. What do you want, Diana? <laughs> I want to know how your tour went with Elizabeth. Did you learn anything about her? Nothing happened. Really? Then again, I guess she's not too surprising coming out here. Well, I guess it's not too surprising coming out here. Poor guy. Elizabeth is out of his league after all, but I'll cheer him up. What do you think? Want to grab some coffee after school? My tree? No. No, oh. wow. We go to Friends of Cafe. You know you can't resist the best coffee in town. I know you're really bogged down right now, but a day out can really do your wonders. Come out and smell that coffee. Hmm. Huh. What are you talking about? Hey, folks. Morning, fellas. What's going on? Mr. Norton sees Robin's face buried in his arms. What's going on? What happened to him? Well... It didn't work out, but there are plenty of other fish in but... Diana, will you shut up about that, okay? That is not relevant to this conversation. When you say that, it's almost as if you think that Robin was instantly going for her. But... But... But nah. You don't just do things like that on your first time acquaintancing with someone. You tried your luck, Robin. I didn't get my first girlfriend till I was 28, but man, she was a looker. What? I'm just tired, damn it! A few more students enter the room as a spell sounds, and Robin is visibly upset. Curses. Let's see now. Let's go into the study hall in the next time of Aquadine, folks. Thank you all so much for watching this, folks. It was a little bit confusing at first as to see who the protagonist of the game was, but he goes under two names, Robin and Sel, which I don't think I'm pronouncing correctly, C-I-E-L. That's homework for me to do for the next time. So thank you all so much you folks, and see you all in the next time of Aquadine. I'm really enjoying this so far. I love the colour palettes as well, having like this brown, this blue in here. It really does give off a very ocean vibe. Like the brown representing the rocks that you may see out of sea and the blue representing, well, the sky and the sea itself. So I'm really enjoying it for what it is at the moment. But if I come back to this on part two and realize there's only about 10 minutes left, then I'm going to be really annoyed. <laughs> I'm just joking. Thank you all so much for watching, folks, and take care of yourselves.